Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. Today we are going to learn about the anatomy of the maxillary canine. And to be specific, since we have two canines in the maxilla, one left and one right, we are talking about the right of the patient or the left of the patient. So today we are going to talk about the right maxillary canine. This tooth right here. All right. So this is our teeth as you can see from all the sides we will be learning from all the aspects right but before that there is a disclaimer this video has been made in collaboration with the bone box you can download their app using the description box given below and you can learn anatomy very well because as you can see they have made an awesome 3d model so let's begin with today's video. First of all, I would like to begin with the dimension of this tooth. Okay, let's see the dimension. First of all, we have the cervical incisal, this length. Cervical incisal length is 10 mm. And then we have the length of the root. So this tooth has the maximum length among all the teeth and that is 17 mm okay so that was about the length then the mesiodistal diameter is 7.5 mm and at the cervix like here it is 5.5 .5. As you can appreciate, the width is decreasing from the contact point because it is decreasing from 7.5 to 5.5 mm. Then let's talk about this side. This is the buccal. This is the lingual or more appropriately palatal because it's the maxillary teeth. So the diameter is 8 mm. The largest diameter we are talking about. That is the 8 mm bucco lingually and at the cervix as you can see it is just getting a little lesser so it is 7 mm okay then we will be talking about the curvature of the cervical line this right here and this right here okay so since it is the right canine so this will be the distal side and this will be the mesial side okay so this curvature right here so distal curvature is lesser than the mesial curvature as you can appreciate this dip is a little less compared to this dip right here okay so this was all about the dimension of this tooth now we will see the anatomy of all the aspects right so let's begin okay now, if you compare this tooth to the central incisor, this is actually narrower than the central incisor, about 1 mm narrower than the central incisor. Now, you must be aware of the basic terms like this is the cervical line, this is the mesial incisal edge, this is the distal incisal edge, right? This is the mesial side, distal side. So, this cervical portion, this is convex. And this convexity, as you can see here, it is towards the root, right? It is towards the root. This is the contact area. This and this is the contact area. The broadest portion obviously will be the contact area because it will contact the tooth that is just next to it. So, measly from the contact area to the cervix, it may be convex, okay? Or they can be a little bit of dip like this little bit of dip here above this contact area and you must be wondering where exactly is this contact area right so if we divide the crown into thirds let us suppose like this okay 
so the center of the contact area on the mesial side it will be at the junction of the middle third this is the middle third and this is the incisal third and this is the cervical third right so at the junction of the middle and the cervical third we have this center of the contact area area is a large space right so the center of that area will be here okay i might not have drawn it very accurately but you got the idea right now coming to distal side the shape between the cervical line and the contact area is concave the center of the contact area distally is the center of the middle third so this entire from here to here is the middle third right so the center of this middle third like here it will be the center of the distal contact area means distally it is here and mesially it is here now the cusp tip will be in line with the center of the root okay and we have two slopes here the mesial cusp tip and the distal cusp tip right as you can see the mesial slope is shorter than the distal one so this will help us differentiate between the right and the left canine like if you place the tooth towards you means the buccal side towards you and you have the mesial incisal edge towards your right you can imagine that this is the right canine okay now talking about the surface as you can see the surface of this tooth the labial surface this is quite smooth except few you know lines which are going here so we have a shallow depression mesially and distally and we have because of these lines we have three lobes right the center one is the bulkiest so middle labial lobe has the most development now coming to the root as you can see here this root it is conical in shape okay and as it goes apically it is thinning down and also we have a curvature right so this curvature it can be mesial or distal but mostly it is distal so this is one more way to find out whether this is right canine or the left canine okay because it goes distally right usually mostly it goes distally the curvature goes distally now let's talk about the palatal side this side right here so this is the palatal or the lingual aspect now when you look at the crown from the palatal side can you see the buccal side is also visible right so this tells us or this denotes that that the palatal side of the crown is narrower compared to the buccal side because if it was not narrower we would not have seen the back portion right this is the cingulum as you can see it is very large very bulky and we have definitive ridges giving it a m kind of shape right sometimes we can find a well developed lingual ridge that will be from the cusp tip and it will go towards the cingulum we can find some depressions concavities here and these are called as the mesial and the distal lingual fossa then let's see the root now again you can appreciate that the buccal side is visible from this side so that means we have a narrower root from the palatal side okay now if you just tilt it you can see developmental depression both mesially as well as distally so this was about the lingual aspect now in the next video we will be seeing at the mesial aspect and the distal aspect in detail so if you found the video helpful and if you want me to continue with anatomy using this 3d method do let me know in the comment section below i really want to hear your feedback and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for such helpful videos i'll see you in the next video take very good care of yourself allah hafiz